The decision for the White House to ban Russian oil has been a long time coming, and at first it seemed like it might not come at all. In our sanctions package, we specifically designed to allow energy payments to continue. We are closely monitoring energy supplies for any disruption. Are you considering banning Russian oil imports? Uh, nothing is off the table. We're banning all imports of Russian oil and gas and energy. President Biden's move pushed by two factors, fellow party members, including Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, backing the ban. And this, a recent poll showing that seven in 10 Americans support this ban, despite a likely further spike in gas prices. Representative Raja Krishnamurthy, Democrat of Illinois, joins us now. Congressman, uh, was it Zelensky? Was it Europe? Was it Congress? It seems like the president's hands were sort of tied on this. Yeah, I think it was all of the above. You know, 71% of the American people pushing you to do something in the face of just incredible, uh, an incredible barbaric, insidious invasion of Ukraine, uh, I think makes a lot of sense for what uh, the president did today. Do you think there's any concern at all that our support, as strong as it is right now with this, might wane if gas prices get to seven, eight, nine dollars a gallon? I don't know, but I think that it's uh, prudent that the president uh, is releasing uh, millions of barrels of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Oil Reserve and uh, acting in concert with our allies. I think that Putin is banking on Americans caving because gas prices go up. Uh, but I think that um, he's going to be surprised the American people are not going to cave to this bully. Let's listen to a little more from the president. He talked uh, about the political fallout indirectly, I guess, of this decision. Here's part of what he said. The decision today is not without cost here at home. Putin's war is already hurting American families at the gas pump. And with this action, it's going to go up further. I'm going to do everything I can to minimize Putin's price hike here at home. That's, that's what stood out to me, Congressman, when you said Putin's price hike. Uh, I mean, Democrats already have an uphill uh, climb here with the midterms approaching and Republicans using inflation and gas prices against Democrats leading up to this. Now you have this. Um, I'm just wondering uh, the bipartisan nature of this in particular. Does that make a difference politically? Democratic colleagues, I think, reflects the sentiment of want Putin to be able to fund his war effort with oil. And that's what he's doing right now. And so we've got to cut off that source of funding as much as we possibly can. So what about Poland today offering to give us, the U.S., 28 of these MiG-29s, but then it's up to us to somehow get them into Ukraine? Uh, how do we do that, first of all? And is this an escalation? Well, I think that, as you know, we are overtly uh, supplying the Ukrainians with uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of armaments at this point, and they need a way to protect the skies because they're being pummeled by the Russian Air Force. And so uh, we obviously are not going to go into Ukraine. We're not going to deploy troops. We're not going to put our own fighter jets there. It does make sense to give them the means to protect themselves, and that means fighter jets. Yeah, in Rammstein, Germany, right, or soon, apparently. Again, the question is, how do we get him there? Let me ask you this. We talked about uh, a Churchill quote uh, last week on the broadcast where he said that you can always count on the Americans to do the right thing after they've tried everything else. Um, is the right thing here, Congressman, stopping Putin, whatever that takes? Well, we're not going to deploy our troops. We're not going to, uh, you know, enter into a dangerous escalatory spiral However, I do think that we should supply the Ukrainians with whatever it takes for them to defend themselves. And as you know, they're, they've mustered a courageous, stiff resistance mm -hmm. that has really brought the Russian military uh, to its knees in Ukraine so far. But uh, they need more, and that's why it's appropriate to uh, furnish these uh, fighter jets as well as uh, other surface-to-air uh, systems, missile systems as, as needed to protect the skies. All right. Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy from Illinois, thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate the time. Thank you, Joe. The U.S.